Today, guys, we're talking about what happens or what could happen if you're trying to time the market on your real estate sale or purchase. Stay tuned to the end. We're going to talk all about it. Hey guys, I'm James Dean, team leader of the James E. Mountain Homes team. Thank you so much for watching these videos. Just really quick before we get into the meat of this video, I just wanted to make sure if you haven't done so already, hit that subscription button down below, hit that notification bell. That keeps you updated on all the new videos that we have coming out weekly. Uh, we've got several that come out each week um, on this channel, so please, please stay up to date with that. Also, if you've got any questions whatsoever that are real estate related or just in the community, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and give us a call. You can either call us at 719-266-2725 you could text us to that number as well, or you can email us at info at jdmret.net. Please, whatever you got to do to get those questions to us, please ask. We're here to help. We're here to provide value to you and helping you make informed decisions, whether you're looking to buy or sell real estate or just typical questions for the community out here. We are local experts of this area and we love this area. So please, please, please reach out to us and we hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay. So today guys, we're talking specifically about what can and can't happen and the risks and advantages evolved with trying to time the market for both your sell and your purchase in real estate. Now, I want to start this conversation off with one thing. Number one, if you're not doing this on a purely investment standpoint, there are so many other things that you need to consider before you start to consider trying to time the market. Number one, you might not even have the option or the opportunity to do that because it's going to be a job move or something's happened in your life that's caused you to move at the particular time that you are. I'm pretty sure most people, when they move around Christmas, aren't saying, hey, I want to move at Christmas time, that's my favorite time of year to move. Folks just aren't doing that. It's happening because of a life event that makes them need to do that. So I say that because if you're if you're not an investor and you're not out there doing it specifically with investment style purposes, you need to have a different type of mindset. And, and this mindset really is, is what are your needs currently right now and how will they affect you in the, in the both short-term and long-term future? Because more than likely, if you're looking at purchasing or buying and you're not doing it on the purely investment side, you're probably gonna be in that home anywhere between five to seven years at a minimum. Now that's important to remember because even if the market is starting to increase or you feel like it's at the top of a bubble, and we'll talk about the big bubble back in 2008 briefly as well, you are absolutely going to have enough time to recruit, recoup anything that you have lost through that process as well to be able to gain anything back through that if you have the house long enough. Now back in the 2008 bubble, I'm a perfect example of this. We had to sell, we had to sell at the worst time and it was because we didn't own the house as long as I wish that we could have because if we had, we wouldn't have lost anything. We had to move in a much shorter time frame than the five or seven years because I was in the military and because of that, we did lose money on that. Now, if we did not have to sell that quickly and we could have held onto that house for a couple more years, we would have at least broken even on that and would not have had a loss. And breaking of even is very much so one of those things like, did I really break even or not break even? Because there's so many other things that go into that, like tax incentives. Um, I did not have increases in rent. My rent, my money or my mortgage payments stayed the same the whole time. So there was a lot of advantage to that. That was a huge, huge housing bubble that most people will remember. Now, if you're trying to time the market and you're buying, that's, a, that's another difficult thing to do because if you're trying to time it, here's what's going to happen. If the market's increasing, your likelihood of being super competitive, especially if interest rates are high, are very low. So you're going to have more choices that are out there and not to be competing with other people. Once the market starts to turn down, that's usually because something's been in place that's been pushing that process to happen on there, like the Fed, for instance, keeping interest rates up. And as the market starts to go down, the Fed eventually will more than likely relieve that stress and in interest rate. So now you've got a two-factor petition rate under. You've got cheaper prices, more houses in the market, but cheaper prices, so you know, more buyers that come in. Plus, you're going to have lower interest rates. It's going to create more competition on that as well. Trying to ride it out to the very bottom of where the market's going to go before you buy, nobody can predict exactly what is going to happen. We have indicators that can kind of give us ideas. But reality is, is finding something, if you find something that fits your needs, fits your budget, and it's good, and it looks like it's got potential to appraise or to appreciate well later on, then that's probably something you need to make a move on right then and there. You can always use the hindsight as being 2020 and say, oh, if I waited another month, it might've gone down another $10,000. 
but it could have also gone up another $10,000 or you could have ended up competing on it with five other people and then not even had a chance to win the house to begin with. So that's really, really important to think of when you're thinking about trying to time as a buyer going through that process too. For a seller, it's even, it's, it's a lot of the same things. It's just going to be a little bit more prevalent based on what your needs are. Sometimes if you're having to sell because you're moving, you've got to sell right then and there. And then we're looking at trying to compete with the other homes on the market. Now, if we're trying to maximize what we're getting out of that house, it really depends on when you're selling because the market is going to be the market. Everything around you is competing with you, whether it's competing downward or competing upward with you as well, and just things that you need to think about and through that process. Overpricing your house can cause more issues in the long run because it could sit on the market for a whole lot longer. That's something you need to watch out for too, because if you price it correctly right up front, then you're gonna have that opportunity to go ahead and get that house sold as quickly as possible based on the market conditions and based on the amount of buyers that are out there. Now, currently in Teller County, we are actually in more of a buyer's market than we have seen in a long time. We've got over six months of inventory. We have very few buyers that are out there. If you wanna sell your home, you've gotta get aggressive and you've gotta price it correctly in order to get that home sold. Otherwise, your house is gonna sit with the other ones. And that's a hard thing to do when you enter that, that agreement to sell your house well before the market has shown any signs of this, but I am telling you what the market is showing right now, and it's what I'm advising my sellers to do. Waiting it out, it might take a few months, it might take several years to get back to the point that it was before, but in all actuality, the market is what the market is. Nobody can change that. And if there's not buyers coming into your home, then you're probably overpriced. So it's just some food for thought. These are not easy conversations to have with either buyers or sellers, but I'm just being as transparent with you as possible. If you've got any questions, please reach out. I'd be happy to answer those. But I hope you guys learned something from this video. Guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that video. And once again, before you sign off, make sure you hit that subscription button, that notification bell down below. That will keep you updated on all the new videos that we have come out that are here to inform you and help keep you updated on what's happening here, both in the community and in real estate as well. And once again, too, if you've got any questions, please do not hesitate to give us a call, 719-266-2725. You can text us at that number as well, or you can email us at info at jdmret.net, and we will get back to you as quickly as possible to answer all of those questions. We're here to serve you and we look forward to helping you soon.